Today's video is sponsored by AG1. dips yeah day two day two of our solar canopy project everybody's already had their breakfast is all gone and coffee's all gone yum yes you're gonna go for a quick dip i was just thinking gotta richie's, get in this water richie's busy stealing daddy's tools i don't know he's got his own toy this time that's good <laughs> good job boys we're all ready to start working there rick's finishing his coffee sure. you're gonna go for a dip christian's diving off the bow yeah. You gonna watch Richie? No, Come maybe on, you Richie. shouldn't. <laughs> okay, count me down. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> so before we show you how we're gonna power up Sophisticated Lady with our new solar sunshade project, I wanna take a minute to show you how you can power up your body with today's sponsor, AG1. Now, full disclosure, I only just started taking the AG1 about two weeks ago, but I have a few friends that have been taking it for over a year, and they swear by it 100%. So that piqued my interest, of course, to give it a try. The first thing I noticed when the package arrived is that it was made with 100% recyclable materials, which I'm a big fan of. So inside the box was their storage tin, a sample bottle of their D3 and K2 supplements, and of course a one month supply of the AG1 mixture. It also included the bottle to shake your mixture up every morning, and of course the measuring spoon. And for your drink, you can use your daily travel package for one spoon of AG1 your drink. So for those of you unfamiliar, AG1 is a special blend of 75 vitamins and minerals that are designed to not only promote good gut health, but also help support my immune system. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, and vegan-friendly, and has less than one gram of naturally occurring sugar per serving. It almost tastes a bit like, uh, like a minty apple or something like that, but it's quite refreshing, especially when you serve it cold. Plus, the first thing I've noticed after two weeks using the AG1 is I've had a big increase in focus and energy, especially early in the mornings. Low energy is something I've had to deal with for a while, but this is actually helping put a little sprint back in my step, and I'm actually jumping out of bed at six o'clock in the morning now without even thinking about it, which is something I always used to do, but haven't done in a long time. So if any of you guys wanna try it, I can highly recommend it, and if you click on the link that's provided in the description below, they will send you a one-year supply of their D D3 and K2 vitamin supplement along with five of the travel packs free along with your first order. So I hope you guys will enjoy it as much as I do and I look forward to your comments below. Now back to the video. Now for our project we still got the shade up just doing our initial sizing seems everything's fitting good it's been up all night. Now we're gonna take it down because we got to do a test fit with the solar panels which we're gonna do on land because we don't have enough room here to set them out they're fairly big solar panels. But the first thing we need to do is stabilize these two ends so that they don't blow up and down like this. I used to have lines around the edges of the, the ends of the poles that would tie down to the, down to the rail. But now with the pockets here, we don't have any place to tie them. So I'm actually going to stitch a piece of maybe eighth inch rope, just uh, some kind of a large twine onto the edge of the pocket. I'll sew that on and then just drop it down. We'll use that to tie them off and that should be plenty enough to just hold it stabilized in the wind gust so that it doesn't rise in the gust and turn into a big sail. So that's what we're gonna do once we take this down for our, from our test fit. And I think first I'm gonna start making the wire that's gonna be for the solar panels when they go up on top. So we're gonna make an MC4 wire that's gonna come from the back right here where the back of the panels will meet and it needs to come down to here and then just go straight through. And for now, I'm just gonna run it across deck into the back and hook it up to one of the solar generators because again, it is an experiment, so I'm not gonna drill any new holes in the boat here. I don't wanna put in anything permanent yet. And plus this is a removable sunshade, so we don't necessarily need permanent wires. 
But for now, we're just going to run a cable back into here. But I'm going to leave it long enough so that if we do want to run it inside the boat, I can just take the connectors off, run the cable down through into my battery compartment, and it'll uh, hook up to everything permanent down there. Should we so desire, which we don't know yet. Because, like I say, it's an experiment. So the first thing we're going to do is I've already got out my MC4 wiring, which is 8 gauge solar panel wiring. That's these two rolls here. Got our red and our black. And you see I've already put MC4 connector on these ends, like so. So we're going to run these up to the front, measure how long I want them. I'll overextend them a little bit, a little bit longer than we need to, cut them off. Put the other MC4 connectors on the other end, and then that'll be our temporary cable. So when we got the panels hooked up, we can just plug them in and ready to go. So that's what we'll start with. Okay, so Mr. B, I'm gonna give you these two. Now, that way or this way? Um, I'm gonna get, you go up on the okay. front there and I'll pass them through the window here. Okay. Hey, yeah, you can step on the panel, but step on a part that's on solid yeah. ground, not on the corner. Okay, got it. Got it? Okay, I'll feather these up and then you walk them up to the mast. Okay, hang on. You right? Are the wires pretty even? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, gonna cut it right here. Okay, one second. Okay, done. All right. Okay, Rick, hold it there for a second. You don't have to hold it up, but just keep it up there and pull it forward a little bit. Now what we need to do is coil the wire. Just to keep the two terminals together. And that will require my drill. And we use the drill to coil the wiring. Yeah, that's a pretty good set of cables. That's about 45 feet, almost to the front. Right, a little bit of slack on the red. There you go, now you're tight. Okay, they tight? Yep. Okay. All right, we'll even out these two wires. Now to coil these wires, all you need to do is just put them in the drill. So open up the truck all the way. Lock the two wires in. Tighten the chuck, and then don't spin it yet until you've got them tight, okay? Run them forward and hold them tight. Okay, now just hold them tight while I spin, okay? Fire away, hold them tight. And this is all we do, just keep spinning the drill. The wire will tighten up. And we make it tighter than it needs to, it'll actually shorten the wire a little bit, but then when we let it go, it'll uncoil itself so it'll stay together. And that, that should be plenty. Okay. And yeah, you can see it snap rolls a little bit to come back. But now we have a nicely twisted wire. And one thing that will help with when you're running high power wires through the boat also, is it also prevents magnetic energy or interference from coming from the wire, which can interfere with your radios, electronics, anything like that. So it just distorts any magnetic radiation from the wire as the uh, when the current is high because when you have high current through any wire like this it's going to create a magnetic field around the wire this just helps break that field so always a good idea when you're running long heavy duty wires through the boat uh oh uh oh i hear somebody playing with daddy's tools <laughs> okay so next we're gonna we have to add the mc4 connectors onto the cables so we've already cut them we've got our strippers for eight gauge wire we're going to take about half an inch off so we just center it up on that portion of the stripper and squeeze, boom. And it takes off half an inch, just like that. So same thing on the red, and boom. Just like so. Okay, so now we've got one terminal we're gonna use. So we take them apart, we got the female and the male end. Now, ironically, the male part uses the female connector on the inside and vice versa. The female connector uses the male connector or steel connector inside. So we need two of these. Okay. 
just like so. You see, there's the male piece and the female piece there. So inside this black terminal is what these are gonna make the actual connection and they go together like that. So if we're gonna do the male connector here, we need the female connector inside, just like that. Now what we need to do, I need to go back and verify which connector I put on the other end so that we don't have the same connector on both ends of the wire. Okay, so we just got to make sure we have the right end. So on this end, we've got the red terminal, or the red wire has the male connector and the black has the female. So on the back end, we're going to put the male connector on the black wire. Okay, so we're going to start with the black wire here. And we're going to put the male connector with the female insert on the inside. So we start with this insert first. We'll set it up in the crimper. So we just put it there like that and just get it to hold. So right now it's holding. Take the black wire, put it inside the fitting. Like so, and squeeze. And then squeeze it right to the bottom. Give a good crimp and undo. And then check the connector is good and tight. And it is, so we're good to go. Beautiful. Yeah, but where's the male terminal? Yeah, I thought so. Thank you. <laughs> Daddy needs that, please. Yeah, it's gonna go right here. Watch. I show you. Yeah, watch. We take this off, unscrew the cap, make sure the locking device is secure. Slide that on first, then push this on and down until it snaps. Like so. And then it won't come off. Push that up. This makes it waterproof, because you can see there's a rubber gasket in here. So that seals the whole thing up around this eight gauge wire. And then we'll have a waterproof MC4 connector that should last forever. Did the gas come home. Okay, so we tighten that up by hand. And then now, Richie, I need my tools, please. <clears throat> yep, Daddy needs that one, thank you. So we got two tools here. One just goes around the screw connector and the other around the terminal itself. And just gives you leverage to twist and turn, tighten them up. And as soon as this one starts to slip like that, that's as tight as it needs to be. So that is a secure waterproof connection. Okay, so now we do the same on the positive terminal. Set the terminal in the connector, put the wire into the connector and squeeze. Get some good mechanical force on it, all the way to the bottom, and release. And perfect, okay? Make sure it's straight. Take apart the connector fitting. Slide the screw part on. And push. Okay, now it's locked on. Set that in there. Like so, and tight. And that's it. Okay, so now we have a 45 foot MC4 8 gauge connection, extension wire. So we can use this to plug in our panels from the bow directly to one of the stations here. And it's long enough so that when I finish testing it just as a temporary fixture, we can take these off, take the fittings off, run the wire through the hull, down through the floor, up into the battery compartment, hook it up permanent. So we're good to go. All right, now we need to take down the solar shade and stitch the lines on it. So we're gonna bring the sewing machine out again. We'll stitch those lines on first, and then we gotta take the solar shade to shore because the solar panels are too big to roll out here. Rock and roll. Can you see yourself? I know, right? It's pretty cool. Hi. Hi, Richie boy. What you eating? These are called Richie treats. Everybody deserves Richie treats. But you're the cutest when you eat them, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we got our two pieces of line. Trimmed to the same length. So we just need one. Got our tarp 
sunshade, and we got the front leaning edge of it, and where the pocket is that we sewed yesterday. And we want the rope on the bottom of it, so the same side as this fitting here. <coughs> And then we're just going to try and get this on the sewing machine, if possible, let's see, it's getting pretty thick. Now, is this going to be possible? I, don't know. I think we just have to stick this in there, and then let the machine walk it in. <laughs> Mommy! Por favor! Time to go swimming. Go down. Go. Yeah. Party time. Yeah, we ain't doing that. Going, Mama? Yeah. Mommy going swimming? Yeah, he's so hot. Richie oh going swimming. God. Wow. Wow. Uh oh, mommy lost her top. Una does. Oh. Wow, nice cool water, Richie. Look at that, it's so nice and clear today. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's very refreshing. Nice water, buddy. We have a fish. Do you fish? want to see the fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, go see the yeah. fish. Here, Daddy, help. Why are you going to scare me? Oh. What's happening? What's happening? You can stay more up? What's happening? ¿Qué le pasa? No, he doesn't like it because he's doing it because you want him to do it, not because he wants to do it. It's a power thing. But. He's getting that way with everything now. It's called... The terrible twos, bow wow. Oh, he hasn't reached the terrible twos yet. <laughs> no, just imagine how much more fun it gets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, yesterday, Rick Boyd says, No wonder he says no all the time. No, so no, all he hears all the time. No, 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 no. no. First word they learn, always. <laughs> uh oh. You go too close. Man down, man down. <laughs> Did you hey, leave your you beer out for him to drink again? <laughs> Come it's on, Richie. Bye. We ready to go, bud. Hey. Yeah, everybody's been waiting for Daddy while I tried to back up all the footage because I'm having major SD card problems lately, and uh, it's getting to be an issue. So finally got that sorted, but I had to reformat. So now we're ready to go because the next part of the solar project is to take the shade and the solar panels over to shore, where we can lay them out and fasten it to the shade. So that's next. <laughs> Here comes Richie, now he's smiling. Yeah, bud. <laughs> Where's your car? And here's our roll of solar panels. So that's our new SIG solar panels from Bougier V. We're gonna set them all up here. There's our tarp ready to go. Got our poles with us also, but right now, it's time to have lunch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's the big kid thing. <laughs> you already stole it from Richie? Yeah. <laughs> Off it goes. Go get it, Richie. Where's your car? So yeah, after lunch, this place closes down, in which yeah. case we got a great little platform right here with a sunshade that we can fill, do our job, and uh, not bake in the sun, so. Thing is fast. You like that, Richie? Hey, it's cool, huh? So, yeah, my idea with that was to get a cool little car. It's remote control for Richie that's simple. So it just has two sticks with forward and reverse on each one that he can test and practice and kind of get used to the remote control aspect. So maybe next year he'll already be flying the drones. We never know. At first he was a little terrified of it because he'd never seen anything that ran on its own. <laughs> but 
No, he loves it. It's his favorite toy, except, of course, that the big boys keep stealing his toys, so... <laughs> He's not getting much time with it so far. <laughs> hey, guys, salute! Prost. 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 For the new cruise of physical lady. Yep. Prost. Thanks for help so far, and here's to testing out the new solar shade this afternoon. Hey! hey. hey. With any luck. The best solar sun shades yet. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers to that. Why you have just in Panada? Oh, how come you got yours first? Wow, aren't you lucky? Mm. Yum. Richie gets first empanada. Look at you. Mm. Oh, there we go. Gracias. 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 The best part. Gracias. Thank you. This is the best. Fresh made hot salsa. Enjoy, guys. Mm. So good. Easy. Big boy. Uh, you tried some yet? Fire sauce, baby. Mm. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah, it's homemade sauce. They make it fresh every day. Oh my gosh, I yeah, think I'm gonna yum. need extra fire sauce. Mm -hmm. It's our favorite spot for empanadas. Mm. And the best part is you can have two empanadas and a beer for less than five dollars. Actually, yeah. I think it's less than four dollars. Yeah. <laughs> 15,000 pesos now, which is yeah, around 350 four dollars somewhere in there. So it's a great lunch, we really enjoy it and a beer and just cool off and heat up at the same time. So there you can see, we got our layout, and we got two of the solar panels right in the middle here, and we got tons of extra room on the side. So there's good room if we want to actually put a third one in here, which would be really good. So they could separate and have a third panel. There's certainly more room for length, but we're going to leave this all open because this is going to be part of our rain catch upgrade, which is going to be after if this part of the experiment succeeds. So for now, this is about where I wanted them laid out. We got just enough fabric in between them so that when we want to take it down we just fold it in half one panel over on top of the other and then roll them up just like we had before and see how it works so that's the plan but now we're going to test the plan so <laughs> hopefully it works no science uh-huh Now the experimental part, to see if they fold together. <laughs> that's going to be the next trick. Because that's the whole idea, fold them in half and roll them up for transport and storage. And that, my friends, is a 400 watt rolling solar canopy. Cool. <laughs> now I can't wait to see if we can hoist it on the boat. Another one of Captain Rick's harebrained ideas coming to life. What hey, do you think? I gotta say, that is balls of the wall cool, bro. <laughs> and it weighs, what, six pounds? No, it pounds? weighs nothing because 24. both solar panels are only seven uh, pounds seven each. Seven pounds a piece. And about five pounds in fabric. So yeah, it weighs five pounds. Under 20 pounds total. Where did the wind hit it? Five <laughs> well, that's gonna be the test. Yeah. That's gonna be the test of the adhesive, and that's why it needs to be tight. I think uh -huh. it's gonna stick. I bet you, I bet you. Why well, are you hiding over here on your own? I was just thinking you're going to be able to plug into the grid whenever you go to a marina in the future. <laughs> With all the solar yeah, you have on your boat. Power. Exactly, you can sell power to the people in Panama. Well, at anchor, this will put us up to 3.6 kilowatts. I bet you two shiny quarters and sticks. Not including the folding solar panels on deck. If we have the folding solar panel on deck, that's another four, 400 watts. So that's four kilowatts total at anchor. Wow. So that's only when we're at anchor. When we're sailing, obviously, <laughs> we take down the folding panel, we take down the, the rolling panel, the sun grid, or the, the sun shade. I mean, I have a mirror at 1.65, and that's more than I need. So that's impressive. Power hungry. Yeah, I know, and I used to do more than enough with a 1,000 watts, but 
We're just evolving as we go and adding more energy consumption devices. <laughs> now, now, wait a second. I thought we were building a hammock. Well, underneath this is the shape of the hammock. <laughs> yeah. That's underneath the shape. That's and shape in the though. rain when it's, uh, you can still sit in the hammock when it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> and fill the water tanks at the same time. And get power when it's not even sunny. It can be clouded over. Well, that's the great thing about having that much solar is that when it's cloudy, you get an amazing amount of solar when you have that many panels. That's what I noticed on my boat. Yeah. Uh, and it's all sitting here in a little 12 inch wide roll. 400 watts. Double check the voltage on the panels. All right, we got 53.9.8, so that's good. We got good voltage, 54. Not gonna be a lot of power, because of course they're in the shade, but they are getting something, so let's see. All right, so fully shaded, we're still getting 48, 49 watts. Beautiful. And that's from two 400 watt panels facing out of the sun. This one's in the shade also. It's a 400 watt panel. We're getting 12 watts out of that one. So 12 watts on this one and 56 now out of the forward ones. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it does in the sunlight tomorrow morning. I think that's going to gain us a lot of power in the early morning hours that we normally don't get. So that's good. All right, now we wait. But that's it for the night, gentlemen. Cheers. Thank you for your help. Cheers, Rick Boyd. <laughs> Cheers. I'll give a dear to you, bro. Capturing the power of the sun at every opportunity, storing it, reusing it sustainably. Sailing sophisticated lady, baby. <laughs> from 45 to 55 to 70 when you started lifting it up. 72. <laughs> 72 right now, just with you oh, holding even it. Even from our last high, it went up 15% just from pushing that angle up a little bit towards the sun. Yeah, you know, that's good. But yeah, I think we're gonna see a substantial increase in power performance in the morning from these panels. Oh, nice. I'm excited to see how much they actually put out when it's full sun. Hopefully we get uh -huh. full sun tomorrow. We shall see soon. Job well done, boys. See, see. Okay, wait, who's uh, doing the first watch holding it? <laughs> <laughs> I volunteer. Watch your head. Yeah, hey, look at you. Under the sunshade. Pretty good, right? Here, come this way. Uh -huh. It's pretty good. Yeah. Wow. It's a whole new world. <laughs>